In this video, we're going to learn how to find a formula for the inverse of a function. So here we're given the formula for the original function, f of x equals something. And we want to find the formula for f inverse. So our goal is to get f inverse of x equals something. So number one, we want to write y equals whatever that function equals. Number two, we're going to interchange x and y. So everywhere you see x, you're going to put y, and, every, and then the y is going to change to x. Okay? This is the inverse step. Because remember, we said that inverse changes the input and the output. x is the input, y is the output. When you change their roles, then you get the inverse. And then to get the formula, we're going to solve for y. In other words, we're going to isolate the y. Okay, and then, so that's going to give us y equals something. And this new y is basically f inverse of x. So we're going to get f inverse of x is equal to something. So in these three steps, we get the f inverse of x formula. Now let's see how this works for an example. So given f of x equals 6x, find f inverse of x. And let's go through the three steps. So the first step is write y equals whatever the function is. Then interchange x and y, x equals 6y, and then solve for y. Here to solve for y, what do we do? We divide both sides by 6. So x over 6 is 6y over 6, and then of course the 6 is canceled, and we end up with y equals um, x over 6. So now this new y is exactly what the inverse is. This is f inverse of x which is x over 6, okay, and that's the answer. Now this makes a lot of sense, right? I mean, if your original function up here multiplies everything by 6, how do you undo that operation? Well, you divide it by 6. And so it makes sense that the inverse operation is just dividing by 6, okay? For simple functions, it's not hard to guess the formula. But for more complicated ones, these three steps that I've just outlined will make it easier to find the formulas of the inverse. So let's take a, let's take a look at some more examples here. So in this next example, we have given p of x equals 1 over x plus 3, we want to find a formula for p inverse of x. Okay? All right, so the first step is to write down y is equal to 1 over x plus 3, and then do the inverse step, which is interchanging x and y, so x equals 1 over y plus 3. Now we have to figure out a way to isolate the y. Well, let me move this over a little bit. Um, the best way to do that is to get rid of the fraction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by the LCD, like we did when we were thinking about rational equations. And so multiplying both sides by y plus 3 cancels the fractions. And on the left side, I have the distributive property xy plus 3x equals 1. And remember, we're isolating y. So let's subtract 3x from both sides to get xy equals 1 minus 3x. And then to isolate y, x times y, we should, what should we do? Divide both sides by x. So here we have y equals the fraction 1 minus 3x all over x. And there you go. 
well, no, wait a minute. We're not done yet. This is the new y, and we're going to call this p inverse, because our original function was called p. So p inverse is 1 minus 3x all over x. And there we go. We found the formula for p inverse. Let's do one more example. I'll do another example with these fractions. They tend to confuse some people, including me most of the time. So I need to do one more example. So here, let's take a look at given capital R of x equals x over x plus 2. I want to find a formula for R inverse of x. Okay. First step is easy. Write this as y equals x over x plus 2. Next, interchange x and y. So x equals y over y plus 2. And now we're going to isolate y. Our goal is to get y by itself on one side equals some expression. We can play the same game we just played with the other example. We can multiply both sides by the LCD, which is y plus 2. Use the distributive property on the left, we get xy plus 2x equals, now on this side, the y plus 2 cancels, so we end up with just y. Now remember, the goal is to isolate y. So I'm going to subtract the xy from both sides. That way, on the left side, we don't have any y's. All the y's are on the right. Let's see here. We get 2x equals y minus xy. Here, the trick is, because we don't have a single occurrence of y, it's occurring in both terms, the trick is to factor. y is the GCF here, so it's into 1 minus x. And now to get rid of that 1 minus x, so that y is isolated, we can divide both sides by 1 minus x. Divide the right side, divide the left side. So here we get, let me write it the other way around. So here we have 1 minus x cancels, so that side only has y. I'll put it here. And then on the other side we have fraction, 2x times 1 minus x. So this is the new y, which is actually the inverse function. Our inverse of x is 2x over 1 minus x. So there you have it. Those are a few examples of how to find the inverse. Uh, let me do one more example. This one's going to have radicals in it. So one more example. Given a function formula, so given that f of x is equal to the cube root of x minus 2, I want to find a formula for f inverse of x. Okay. So again, the first step is write y equals whatever the function formula is, cube root of x minus 2, then replace x and y. So x equals cube root of y minus 2, then cube both sides. That's going to get rid of the radical. So on the left side, I have x cubed. On the right side, the cube root and the power of 3 cancel each other. So I'm just left with y minus 2. Now it's really easy to just get y by itself. We just add 2 to both sides. So I add 2 the right side and the left side. Now, on the right side, negative 2 and positive 2 cancel. So I'm just left with y. I'll write it on this. And then the other side has x cubed plus 2. So this new y is actually the formula for f inverse, which is x cubed plus 2. 
So there you have it. We found a formula for F inverse.